Syracuse. South Carolina, 12 offensive rebounds, a plus 8 in second chance points, and a plus 22 in bench points. Iowa did lead for most of the half, but the Gamecocks have been a dominant team in second half this season. By far and away, the best point differential in second half in the nation, a plus 510 as we send things over to Holly Rowe. Checking in with Iowa coach Lisa Blue to rebounding was the story of the first half. She said, we can't grow. We've just got to have better positioning. They did incite one over the back call. She talked to them about having their back stronger, straight up and down. Get those fouls called a little bit more if you're in the right position. And just before they took the full floor, she really tried to encourage her team and said, let's go hard. 20 more minutes. Big smiles from everybody. Just got to find a way to get on that glass. And what a huge steal from Raven Johnson at the end of that second quarter to give South Carolina the three-point lead. She's talked about how this game is personal for her. Can't hit the jumper there, and the rebound ends up with Iowa. I like giving Raven the first look, though. W wondering if that layup at the end of the first half might get her out of a little bit of a shooting funk. Clark looking to shake free. She does. Short on a three, and Kitts able to secure the rebound for South Carolina. An instance where Kitts' arm length was just enough to get the board for her team. And Hall was on Clark to begin the third with those two fouls as Kitts maneuvers inside. A five-point edge for the Gamecocks. So interesting because Chloe Kitts had a quiet game against NC State in the semifinal, but playing really well here in this championship matchup. Marshall did not attempt a shot in that first half. Played all 20 minutes. She, too, playing her final collegiate game. Martin's mid-range won't go. Rebound, South Carolina. The Gamecocks trying to become the first undefeated national champion since UConn in 2016. Kids, nice start for the second half for South Carolina. Here's a falter left alone, in and out on a three. This could be a danger zone right here for Iowa and an opportunity for South Carolina to blow this open. We have seen that as recently as the semifinals. They were up one at the half to NC State. They were up a million by the end of the third. Here's Pow Pow, mid-range jumper. Rolls in. How about the start for South Carolina? And Lisa Bluter wanted a timeout instead, Martin. And now Lisa Bluter gets her timeout as Cappy Marshall's three will not count. Bluter does not want this momentum to balloon any further for South Carolina. 6-0 start to the third. The sophomore Chloe Kitts here in the third quarter getting to the rim, then getting the mid-range jumper to fall as well. Her bench crew feeling the splurge. Has been in the Final Four now for four straight years. Lost in the semifinals, heartbreaking loss at the buzzer to Stanford. And how, how do they respond? Well, the next year they come back, they win the championship. Last year, undefeated into the semis, a heartbreaking loss to Caitlin Clark in Iowa. How do they respond this season right now, leading by nine in the third quarter of the national championship game as we send things over to Holly Rowe? Well, how does Iowa respond to this South Carolina run right now in their last time? Now, Caitlin Clark clapping her hands, big smile. We're good, we're good. Lisa Bluter reiterating the importance of putting a body on someone, particularly number 21, Chloe Kids. She's got seven boards. Martin slings it inside. Good movement here. A falter. Can't hit the three. Second clean look from a falter from three. Thank you, Ali. That she has not knocked down to begin this third. South Carolina, an 11-0 run dating back to the final 53 seconds of the second quarter. And that's thrown out of bounds by Pow Pow, who has talked about the difficulty of feeding the post, learning the nuances of 6'7", Camilla Cardoso, and has relied on Raven Johnson a lot for that, who played with Camilla in AAU ball. Just the fifth South Carolina turnover. Here's Clark. in, bodies inside and finishes, tough finish for Clark, who is looking for an and one, she has 23 points. 
They dump it down. Cardoso gets whacked by Stolke. And free throws here for Camilla Cardoso. Holly? Well, you're talking about that great chemistry with Camilla Cardoso and Raven Johnson. Camilla's a fascinating story. Leaving Brazil at just 15 years old, she came to high school in Tennessee. She didn't speak a word of English, and Raven was one of the friends that helped her out. They've played together for eight years. They've had each other's backs in that sacrifice from Camilla Cardoso. Oh, what a dish from Clark, and it'll stay here with Iowa. And Stolke couldn't quite haul it in. The way she leads her teammates in full speed with perfectly placed passes. Here's Clark curling, has Cardoso on her. The step back three, no, and kicks the rebound. Cardoso, pretty good contest there for being dragged down on the perimeter and hanging with Clark. Here is Kicks. Has hit some big jumpers in this quarter and gets called for a charge as a falter took the contact. And that will be number two on Chloe Kitts. So two on Stolke, two on O'Grady and a falter for Iowa. And now two on Kitts, Hall, Watkins and Johnson, Tessa Johnson for South Carolina. And it certainly did look like she initiated the contact and the defense was there. Here's Martin behind Stolke. Martin trying to get into the body of Cardoso. And backs it out. To the corner. Marshall left alone. Connects. Out of three. Her first field goal attempt of the afternoon. Here's Hall zigging inside. The pull-up is good. Strong take from Bree Hall. Seen a lot of... Good looks and successful attempts here in the third quarter in the mid-range for the South Carolina team. Clark trying to muscle it in, could not. Was looking for a whistle, did not come. Clark, 7 of 18 from the floor now. Less efficient after a blistering start to this game. At 18, a Final Four record in the first. Johnson wide open, in and out. Here comes Clark. Clark finds the cutter, what a look! The video game vision of Caitlin Clark. And a Stolke up to 11. After she had 23 in the semifinals and Cardoso throws it off the rim. Hell ball here. Possession arrow belongs to Iowa. Iowa, nice response here after the strong start this third from South Carolina. And it has been the others getting in on the action with an assist from Clark. Gabby Marshall steps in to hit her first three. And then here's that video game vision for you, Ryan Rucco. Stokey with the two. Now time for today's Need to Know, brought to you by Dick Sporting Goods. What's at stake today for South Carolina? Well, they'd be the 10th undefeated national champion. They'd be just the fifth program with three national titles, and they'd win their second championship in the last three seasons. They have been the premier program in women's college basketball over the last seven, eight years. And Dawn Staley trying to become just the fifth coach to win three titles. In this stretch here, my eyes are on Ashlyn Watkins. She only played three minutes in that first half. You would expect her to have good legs and bounce and determination here. Tessa Johnson in as well. Here is Clark. Clark into the paint, spinning and finishing. Two-point game, nice response from Iowa. Clark has 25. A 9-2 Hawkeye run. Here's Johnson, the freshman. Nice feed, Hall in the corner, unable to hit. Watkins the board, there she is, Rebecca. That is what she does. What a dime, Clark and Stokey misses the layup. 
Clark put it right in Stolke's lap, but she was unable to finish. But I love coming back down the floor. Caitlin Clark clapped her hands, gave Stolke five as a way to say, it's okay, young player. One of the things that Clark's teammates credited her with against UConn was her body language not getting frustrated. How about Tessa Johnson? The freshman again delivering off the bench. The lead right back to seven for South Carolina. Clark on the drive has it knocked away by Johnson gets it back Marshall left alone can hit rebound Watkins went towering over to get a hand on the rebound she certainly helps secure that offensive board for her team big swing the Stokey miss layup to the Tessa Johnson three and now Marshall comes up with a steal Watkins threw it right to her Here's Martin, off to Clark, deep three, won't go. Tessa Johnson, the rebound, Clark, now four of nine from deep in this game. But she recognized that she had Watkins on her and wanted to get that look going left. Iowa in a zone. Raven Johnson looking in, off to Tessa Johnson. Let's it fly. You bet. Three hole gives South Carolina a 10 point lead. Here's a falter diving in and a held ball. South Carolina has the possession arrow. Three hole stepping into this three. This is the biggest difference between South Carolina a year ago this year as you see Darius Rucker celebrating this year's South Carolina team has multiple consistent efficient weapons from the perimeter and an 8-0 run from the Gamecocks after Iowa had cut it to two they are seven for 15 from three last year in the semifinal to your point Rebecca they were just four for 20 and you're shooting out of the zone, the defense out of the zone. Iowa back to a man-to-man. -man. Raven Johnson can't finish. Rebound hits Paul Wiley's foot, and it's out of bounds to Iowa. Well, we've seen some of what the cameras have caught, and it's very good. They have been everywhere throughout this season. Martin gets denied by Watkins. Martin follows it up and gets fouled by Watkins. That will be number three on Ashlyn Watkins. Ella Cardoso isn't on the floor, but Watkins may not be 6'7", but she can certainly elevate and block shots. Now Cardoso will come and get Watkins after picking up that third. Kate Martin at the line. Iowa's first free throws of the quarter. They were 10 of 11 in the first half. And Martin sinks the first. This is the first time you've ever had the most efficient offensive team playing the most efficient defensive team in a national championship. Iowa, number one in offensive rating. South Carolina, number one in defensive rating. Martin ends the 8-0 run. Cardoso back to work. Can't finish. Controlled by a falter. Here's Martin into the lane, fading away, can't drop it in, and the rebound for Wiley. For Wiley flips it ahead, Johnson, another! Tessa Johnson, a freshman in status only. Timeout, Iowa. Carolina shooting 50% from three. Dangerous in transition. And how about the confidence that you've mentioned of this freshman? Love it. Point to the one who passed it to you. A point to Holly Rowe right now then. Well, Tessa Johnson, I was talking to her dad, Jamel, and her mom, Danielle, yesterday. They were telling me that she has two older sisters that were both basketball players. One played at Iowa State. And one time, in, one of them was in fourth grade, and they were short of players. So they called down and got Tessa to come and play. 
she was just in second grade, two years older, and at that age, two years is a big difference, and they said she was the best player. She wasn't scared, she just came in, she was confident, she has this exuberant, ebullient personality, and it's just carrying over right now. She is super confident tonight. Well, she does, Holly. She lights up the room. We've sensed that right away, meeting with her and the South Carolina players who are so connected as a team. They are also incredibly loose, have not felt the weight of their undefeated season at all. There's a falter, bouncing in a crowd, right back to her. She lays it in. That's a good passing in tight spaces from Iowa. Well, part of it is keep away from Camilla Carlos, but she's on you. She's on me. I'm not shooting. I'm passing to you. A 17-second difference. Game and shot clock. Nine-point South Carolina lead. Fagan loses the handle. Got it back. And a travel. No, a three-second violation. And now Iowa can hold for a final shot at the end of this third. When you're in the post, if you catch it and immediately start your move to the basket, you get a fresh three seconds. She did not there. As a result, three seconds call. I love how all over the rules you are. You know that rule book inside out. Outside in. So at the end of the second, Iowa was down one, holding for a final shot. And Raven Johnson picked the pocket of Clark and laid it in to end the half. How does the third end? Clark around a screen. Clark, step back three, is short. Rebound, bounces out of bounds, and it will stay with Iowa, but just .2 on the shot clock. Would have to be a tip. You cannot catch and shoot with two-tenths of a second. Clark lobs it up. O'Grady, no, and that will do it for the third. South Carolina leading by nine, closing in on a championship. Holly Rowe chats with Dawn Staley when we come back. Coach Staley, when you've needed a lift, you've gone to freshmen off the bench. How do you describe the composure and they're taking this moment and seizing it? I mean, it's, it's all the impact of what they're teammates have given them they pour energy into them all season long knowing knowing that they're pretty talented knowing that there's a possibility that that, that they'll share time with them so it's, it's, this team is pretty special in that they want what's best for each individual on the team and that's that's rare 10 minutes to get off a perfect season what will be the most important focus down the stretch i mean the most important thing is to continue to be disciplined defensively continue to contest Test shots. I, I think we're doing a great job at executing our defensive schemes um, on them. Are they going? Are we going to be perfect at it? No, it's a really good Iowa team. But if we can decrease the amount of, amount of shots that they get that are uncontested, increases our chances of winning. Thank you, Coach. Thank you, Holly. Heard Don Staley talking about her freshman. Mylasia Full Wiley has four assists in the game. Delivers it on the money to the other freshman, Tessa Johnson who has been so efficient. Six of nine, three of five from three. Keys for Iowa to get back in down nine to start the fourth. They have to find ways to get some open looks and capitalize on every single one of them. Clark was 0 for 4 from three in that third. Here is Clark. 25 points tonight, 18 of them in the first quarter. Clark bounces, Stolke in a crowd gets fouled. And Hannah Stolke will go to the line to begin this fourth. Iowa was so good and efficient scoring the basketball in that first quarter when they were able to get stops and get out in transition and really run and be in their flow and have Caitlin Clark feeling it. South Carolina's defense has been really good since then. Certainly helped that they've been able to shoot a higher percentage, come back, set their D, try to deny Clark. Stolke uh, shot it much better from the line of late, but misses both there. And Cardoso just able to stay in bounds. He missed free throws from Stokey, who had been at about 72% over her last eight games, but just 46% in her career. A falter falls. Johnson capitalizes. I'm so impressed with Tessa Johnson. And we've seen it throughout this tournament, Rebecca, how many times she has hit big shots. Maybe not this depth of production from her throughout the tournament, but... She's had key, timely baskets throughout. Clark wanted a whistle, did not get it, does get the roll. 
Clark up to 27. Here's for Wiley. Barges in and finishes. Malaysia for Wiley and Tessa Johnson the keys for South Carolina. And a foul is going to be on Raven Johnson, and that will be her second. Here today's Star Stories, brought to you by Honda. Caitlin Clark got off to a torrid start at 18 points in the first quarter. Iowa had built an 11-point lead early, and South Carolina went to its bench, and Dawn Staley pushed the right buttons with Tessa Johnson and Malaysia for Wiley. Here's Stolke. Stolke turns the corner. Kick ball. We'll keep it here. 8.30 to go in this fourth quarter, and South Carolina an 11-point lead. Is Dawn Staley a button pusher or a string puller? She does both. She, <laughs> the puppet master and one in the control room. Martin turns. Can't hit. And you can see a little shrug of the shoulders afterwards from Caitlin Clark. For Wiley dumps it in. Kids can't finish. Cardoso feels inevitable on the interior. It's a 13-point South Carolina lead. Nice look. Martin gets fouled. And Kate Martin will go to the line to shoot two. The overwhelming size inside by South Carolina, in particular, Camilla Cardoso. Kits misses, Cardoso right there, reaches up. What are you going to do with that? And with a different ferocity as well in the last couple of weeks in terms of her demanding the basketball offensively and getting to the glass as well. Holly? Well, Don Staley isn't just a button pusher or string puller. It's not all sunshine and roses. There was a hard point in this season when she had to teach the freshman accountability, in particular, Malaysia Full Wiley. She didn't play in a game, and it was a hard conversation with her, with her mom. And Don said, I have to teach them in these moments. Since then, Malaysia has been one of the best defensive players on the team. She said, I never want to feel that way again. Don Staley holding her accountable has made her better for this moment. And you talk about that conversation with the family, Holly, as Kitts on the offensive glass puts it home. Dawn Staley, we asked of everything you've accomplished as a player, as a coach, you see this moment in women's basketball, what means most to you when you think about your own contributions as a falter gets fouled from behind by Full Wiley? And Dawn said the relationship she has, not just with the players, but with the significant people in their lives. So that is truly the thing she's most proud of with all that she's accomplished in this game. In the game that Don, that Holly referring to, the North Carolina game earlier in the year where Full Wiley only played three minutes, Don didn't like the way she was defending. And what was remarkable to, remarkable to me about that game, it was close. She put a player, and it could have cost them a game having her on the bench, but the lessons are that important to teach young players. Now, if you're Iowa, you've come back from deficits before. Trailed by 12 to UConn, came back and won. Trailed by double digits in the Big Ten Championship game against Nebraska, came back and won. They trailed by 12 here, 7.20 to go in the fourth. Johnson can't bank it in. There's a stop from Iowa. Clark zips it ahead for Wiley. They're able to knock it out of bounds. The difference between this game and those previous few games you mentioned, as you see this, like against most guard defenders, that's getting through. Miley's a wow. Wiley. She can dunk a basketball, able to get up there and deflect, but those other teams where I didn't have the offensive rebounding ability that this South Carolina team has. Clark didn't get much space there with Hall on her. Clark, the crossover and the hit from three. A big one for Iowa. And they build off it. 30 for Clark. For Wiley gets denied. Martin has it. Clark wants it. Clark races to Martin to grab it. She'll fire. In and out. Kept alive to Marshall. Her three is good. Game back on. An 8-0 Iowa run. Mid-range, no. 
Rebound of Falter. A Falter gets it poked from behind and taken by Hall. And not a wise play there from Sydney of Falter. But exceptional energy by Ashlyn Watkins as well. Chasing down. Watkins Hall and for Wiley were all after. And Clark is called for the foul. Or will it be Martin? They both were there. And Tessa Johnson will go to the line. This foul is not called on Caitlin Clark on the block, but it's Kate Martin right there. Yes, that's the right call. Clark is upset because she knows her contact was clean, but Martin hit the arm of Johnson. This is the second foul on Kate Martin as Tessa Johnson hits the free throw. South Carolina three for eight from the line now today. Just a huge stop in transition a moment ago as Iowa was starting to build some momentum. Cardoso back in. How about the bench points? 36-0 advantage for South Carolina. It's one of the great assets all season long of this South Carolina team. Clark wheeling, taking, short. And South Carolina has been able to steady things after that 8-0 Iowa run. Johnson. Trying to get it inside. Watkins surrounded. Still plenty of time to operate for South Carolina. Cardoso finds Johnson. Her three in and out. Cardoso the rebound and a held ball. No, a travel. A travel from Cardoso and South Carolina turns it over. On Staley, not so sure. Iowa, though, needs to play nearly flawless defense, not only initially, but getting on the glass. Here's Clark. Martin into the lane. Martin off of South Carolina. And it stays with Iowa. Let's see. Oh, I, I'm not sure there's a travel there. Jump ball. That's yeah, I think it's ball. a held ball which the possession arrow belongs with South Carolina, so would have been their basketball. Clark finds the cutter. Martin lays it in. Six-point game. Coming on five minutes to go for the national championship. 16 for Kate Martin. Final college game for her, Gabby Marshall, Caitlin Clark, and then Camila Cardoso for South Carolina. Shot clock fading. Johnson's jumper off the mark. Watkins. And a foul is called on Martin. It will be her third. 439 to go in the fourth quarter. All the action you could hope for. A two-possession game. South Carolina on the brink of perfection. Iowa seeking the comeback in its first national championship. Check out our most reliable team brought to you by Xfinity. Well, South Carolina has certainly been the most reliable team in the country in recent years. Last year, we're undefeated until falling to Iowa in the semifinals. They have five players selected to the WNBA draft, including our colleague, Aaliyah Boston, you will hear on the post game. Then this year, what do they do? Well, they just go 37-0 in the national championship game, trying to become the first undefeated champions since 2016. And after all the players they lost, not many people picked them to be back in this moment. And we asked Dawn Staley and her players, was there a moment during the season when you realized, oh, we're going to be really good? And all of them said that opening game in Paris is when they understood, oh, no, we could be special again. I think that's when the rest of the basketball world <laughs> realized it as well. Six-point game here, 439 to go in the fourth. Iowa has made a push after trailing by 14. Hall, mid-range, yes. A big one for Bree Hall, the vocal leader of this South Carolina squad. Clark has 30. Clark will drive it. Squeezes it off of a leg. Marshall able to save it. And Iowa still has possession. A falter gets pushed. Banks it in. 
Abby Marshall with only six points in this game, but that hustle play was huge to get that basketball before it crossed the line or touched the line. Saves it to a falter, and he just takes it confidently to the rim. Third foul on Hall as a falter completes the three-point play. It's a five-point game. 4-10 to go in the championship. Al Powell creeping back. Was three for three from three in the first half. Johnson, catch, fire, no, rebound, Clark. Clark lost the handle, gets it back from Martin. Clark into the corner. Marshall resets with Martin. Tend to shoot. Martin into the paint, and she travels. Huge turnover there from Iowa. Eighty to seventy-five, South Carolina in front. Three twenty to go in the fourth. Johnson given space. Not taking this time. She struggled with her shot today. One of ten. Pow pow five to shoot. Pow pow looking for an angle. Gets fouled with 2.2 on the shot clock. Tahina Pow Pow creating an opportunity. Interesting to note that Addison O'Grady has gotten considerable minutes here in this fourth quarter. A little bit more size and strength against Cardoso. Clearly a foul on a falter who grabs the wrist. Nice step through by Tahina Pow Pow. Rebecca, you talked about it. Tahina Pow Pow chatted with us in Paris, said last year watching the semifinal game against Iowa, looked at South Carolina's inability to shoot from deep and said they could use me. Transferred here, it's been a perfect fit. It was before she had made the decision to transfer to South Carolina, and she said, I was thinking, that could be me out there making shots. Iowa in the bonus. South Carolina leading by six. Iowa still with one foul to give. Clark has it knocked away. Martin on the drive. O'Grady gets denied. Cardoso gobbles it up. Outstanding defense by Raven Johnson on Caitlin Clark fighting over that screen. Cardoso, 13 points, 13 rebounds, and three blocks. 2.40 to go. Six-point South Carolina lead. Here's Johnson. Johnson, the pull-up. No rebound. Snare. Cardoso. Unstoppable. Clark launches. Won't go. Long rebound. Johnson. And was that the last gasp from Iowa? John Steele telling Johnson, settle in, understanding time and score and the advantage she has. Johnson gets fouled by Clark. Iowa had one to give. The separator, Camilla Cardoso, because of what she does on both ends. Huge block here, fighting, getting position, corralling, finishing off balance. What a day she has had. Colin Staley has talked to us about how determined Cardoso has been during this tournament. Felt like her announcing her decision to go pro helped free her up a little bit, make her enjoy this run even more. 15 points, 15 boards. Three blocks as well. Pow Pow's three off the mark. Rebound hits the floor, and it's going to stay here as Iowa gets called for the foul. And South Carolina is going to go to the line. The Iowa fans perplexed at that whistle. Kate Martin here, boxing out. Uh, it's the right hand hold. It's the right hand hold. Right, watch her right hand, puts it. You're good there until you have the hold on the right side. And it wasn't necessary, I don't oh. think, either from Martin. I believe it should be Watkins shooting these free throws. And the officials are going to talk about it. That is foul number four on Martin, and it is Watkins who will go to the line. 47% as a freshman, 55.5% this year. And 
and misses the first. There is still plenty of time for Iowa. Down eight, 147 to go. Talked about it a lot in the Iowa-UConn game at the end. Boxing out on the free throw is important. Especially when Cardoso is involved. Watkins hits the second. Nine point South Carolina lead. Clark on the drive. Clark the flip. Forced it up. Rebound Johnson. A couple of forces in a row from Clark. And both of them fruitless. The South Carolina faithful can start to sense it. Iowa has to foul. That's what Lisa Bluter wants, or at least pressure. And now Caitlin Clark will foul Raven Johnson. You know, Caitlin Clark was asked yesterday, Rebecca, about her legacy. But she had such a wonderful answer. So asked about whether or not this game factors into it. She said, I don't want my legacy to be, I won this amount of games or scored this amount of points. I hope it's what I was able to do for the game of women's basketball. I hope it's the young boys and girls that were inspired to play this sport or dream to do whatever they want to do in their lives. For me, I don't need to validate myself within 40 minutes. I don't think that's a fair assessment. South Carolina to stop. Iowa will have to foul again. They do, and Pow Pow goes to the line. But they allowed South Carolina to burn about 15 seconds the last two possessions by not fouling quicker. You see the records broken this season for Caitlin Clark. Career points, single season points, career threes, single season threes. As South Carolina closes in on a championship. They talked about this being a get-back game. After Iowa beating them last year. Clark on the drive. Elevates, can't finish. Cardoso the rebound. Johnson plows ahead. A fault are able to come up with a steal. And Iowa will take a timeout with 53 and a half seconds remaining in this fourth quarter. And Dawn Staley's team right at the doorstep of an unblemished season. South Carolina team that's done in this championship game what they have done all season long. Their identity, shooting the ball efficiently, being getting stops consistently on the defensive end, and then their bench and how they can wear you down and uplift themselves. A 37 to nothing advantage off the bench for South Carolina. And as you've seen from this game, they were second in the country in bench scoring, and that's not just because they were blowing teams out and their bench was getting a lot of minutes. They have used all nine players of their rotation in any spot at any time. Martin chucks it in. Stolke catches. Clark has it taken away by Johnson. And now will Iowa back off? And it looks like they will. Don Staley telling Raven Johnson, do not shoot. What a crescendo here this afternoon for women's basketball. As Molly Davis, who has been injured and unable to play, comes to the scorer's table so she can touch the floor one last time. And Caitlin Clark says goodbye to college basketball. No one has done more to grow the popularity in a broad way of this game, in the history of the game, than Caitlin Clark.
Camilla Cardoso checks out for South Carolina. Career-high 17 rebounds for her. Clark finishes with 30 points. Six seconds to go. Perfection with a touch of sweet redemption. Undefeated South Carolina has won its third national championship. the final as South Carolina becomes just the fifth program to win three national championships. You see the tears in the eyes of Dawn Staley as Caitlin Clark gets a handshake from the South Carolina coaching staff. The all-time leading scorer in Division I history.